Welcome to the Crown Gathering 2020 virtual event. We're going to give people just a few more seconds to get logged in and get settled. I'm so grateful that you've joined us online. This is the first time in my 20 years with Crown that we've not been able to meet face to face. But I'm really happy that you've joined us. And welcome to those who are joining us via Facebook Live. Give us a like out there, post your question, and then share this with your friends. This week, hundreds of people are going to participate in Gathering 2020 from all over the world. It's really an exciting event for us. So welcome to our Crown donors. Welcome to our radio and podcast listeners. Some of you who are social media followers have joined us for the first time. We've got small group leaders and participants from all over the world. Our great budget coaches are joining us, our career direct consultants, and some of you I know are just hoping to get involved with the ministry. So today, we want you to be encouraged. We want you to be inspired. We hope you're challenged and maybe even a bit surprised at all that the Lord is doing through Crown. But we also want you to understand where we're headed in 2021. Now coming up, you're gonna meet some of our great Crown staff and our leaders from around the world. You're gonna hear testimonies of Crown's impact and also of God's faithfulness. And then I'm gonna come back and teach a brief message on thriving in the unexpected. And certainly 2020 has been a year of the unexpected. And after I share a vision for where the Lord's taken us, we're going to have time for some Q&A. Amy Hubbard's coming up next. I'm Amy Hubbard, Crown's Poverty Initiatives Director. Despite all of the chaos that has accompanied this year, I'm excited to share some very good news from our Crown leaders around the world. The common thread throughout their stories is this. What the enemy meant as harm, God has used for His good. Our time today is limited, but I want to share as much as possible, starting with the continent of Asia. In Indonesia, small groups are flourishing like never before. No longer limited by the size of a physical meeting space, they are seeing a multiplication of six times the participation now online, and they are excited about how this will lead to future growth. Dr. Suparno has this to share. Greetings from the tropical paradise of Indonesia. To my Crown family, this year has been a tremendous year of growth for Crown Indonesia. Please pray for us that we continue to expand despite the COVID season to the 17,000 islands that comprise of Indonesia. In Hong Kong, COVID created more opportunities for our leaders to serve as many churches invited them to speak and lead small groups. In Taiwan, our leaders partnered with a deaf church to facilitate a crown study for the hearing impaired. They are hopeful that the study will minister to this precious community, helping to change views about finances and bring hope to their lives. Now let's move to the continent of Africa. We are excited to share that the government of Zimbabwe has officially adopted Foundations for Farming as the national agriculture strategy and has asked the team to initiate the training of 1.8 million households. This is an amazing acknowledgement as wherever Foundations for Farming goes, so does Crown Teaching. Requests for more and more stewardship centers are coming in from Africa and beyond. I know you'll enjoy this on the ground update from Crown Malawi. Hello from Malawi. Wow, with COVID, we couldn't train as much as we used to. So we were this year focusing much more on our sustainability model. And God has blessed us in such an amazing way. Right here, we have waste advisors on our property and they're making compost on a commercial scale. We also have our wonderful cheese factory where we're manufacturing bicycle cheese with milk bought from local farmers right on the shelves in Blantyre and beyond. As we've been training beekeepers over several years, we are now buying honey from them. And this honey is being bottled in our factory as gold top honey and put on the shelves in all the retail stores in Malawi. We have something special just across the road from us. They are buying pineapples from local farmers, chopping it up and sterilizing it, putting it in a pouch and on the shelves in the retail stores. Our training farm is more productive than ever and every day people come to purchase fresh organic vegetables thank you so much for partnering with what the lord is doing here in this beautiful nation of malawi finally let's give a shout out to derek and sanet in namibia despite the covid lockdown 
They have trained about 100 students in Foundations for Farming this year, and they also use the Crown Africa Money Map game to teach stewardship. God has watched over this sweet couple this year as Derek suffered a heart attack and later underwent surgery this summer. We love and appreciate you, Derek and Sunette. There is so much taking place around the world and many more stories we could share. Here's another greeting from one of our gathering regulars. Hello, Crown family and my friends. Greetings to you from Mongolia. Well, it's a beautiful day here and I'm so happy to be sharing it with you. It's my joy to work with you and serve our Lord. Faithful steward, faithfulness matters. Behind this message, God's love is conveyed. So this year we are trusting five more workers to join our team to advance God's kingdom. And we appreciate your prayers and we love you. I am Frank Gonzalez, Crown's Senior Director of Global Operations, and have been serving at Crown for more than 14 years now. This year, we have seen growth in so many countries beyond what you might imagine. Whether it was the launching of new stewardship stations, showing how to overcome poverty, or utilizing technology to teach pastors and leaders how to continue to serve their congregations and communities through the struggles of unemployment and loss of hope. Since June, we have reached more than 20,000 people with this virtual initiative and served over 1,500 pastors who asked for our help. There are very many stories to tell and so many of our Crown family who would like to be with us this year. Let me share a few of the greetings that they have sent to you. Hola! Saludos Crown desde el Paraguay. Nos gustaría estar con ustedes, pero por las condiciones no podemos. Pero sí seguimos con la misma visión. ¡Bendiciones! Hola familia Crown. Nós somos Paulo e Regina Max, diretores do Crown Brasil. E estamos felizes de participar do Gap em 2020. Mesmo com a crise, mesmo com a pandemia, nós continuamos trabalhando, continuamos produzindo, formando líderes, formando treinadores. E nós queremos motivá-los a também dar continuidade a esse trabalho. Ensino dos princípios bíblicos financeiros. Deus abençoe a vida de todos. Hola, soy Yeramel Rosario y te saludo desde mi hogar, Santo Domingo, la República Dominicana. Quiero decirte que en Latinoamérica hemos estado trabajando con Carril Direct, con más de 600 consultores en 12 países, impactando la vida de miles de personas. Aún hay muchos lugares donde queremos llegar para ayudar a las personas a que sean buenos administradores y mayordomos de sus talentos y recursos y que vivan de acuerdo al diseño de Dios para su vida. Although I now live in Knoxville, Tennessee, I am originally from Venezuela, and my heart hurts for the people there who are hungry. What a blessing that Crown was able to help send leaders to Malawi, who has now successfully implemented the foundation for farming system in Venezuela. Families are being fed and taught how to overcome poverty. I hope you enjoyed this video sent from Luis. He is so excited. Estamos muy felices de estar en Venezuela desarrollando una obra maravillosa, capacitando en mayordomía. Cada hombre, cada familia pueda desarrollar huertos familiares, en administración de dinero, emprendimientos de negocios utilización de recursos naturales, construcción, carpintería, electricidad. Y nosotros estamos muy felices de ser parte de... We want to extend this program to other countries in Central and South America. Crown is so grateful to be able to respond in time of need, and we are amazed 
at God's grace. He has strengthened, united, and helped us to serve others globally. And in so many new ways this year that has exponentially taught more stewards his biblical principles. My name is Charles Raymond. I'm chairman of the Crown Board, and on behalf of all of the members of the Crown Board, I want to thank you for participating in this virtual Crown gathering. My journey with the Crown began in 2000 when I participated in a 12-week group study with three or four other couples with my wife, Sandy. We had been in a time of great financial challenge in the late 1980s and early, 19, early 1990s in the company and were heavily in debt, both corporately and in personally. By 2000, we had started to make a lot of money and Crown uh, Study came along just at the right time to prevent me and my wife, Sandy, from thinking that we had done something great and that we deserved this money. And the verse that really drove that home to us was 1 Chronicles 29, 11, which starts off with, everything in the heavens and earth is yours, O Lord, and this is your kingdom. I've had the privilege of traveling around with Crown to four different continents, Asia, Africa, South America, and here in the United States, and seeing how Crown has worked in the lives of many people to chain, give them hope in the Lord and hope in eternity by being faithful stewards. I hope you will join me and the Crown Board in going forward to build faithful stewards around the world. Thank you. Hi, my name is Calvin Dillinger. I've been on staff with Crown for eight years and currently serve as Crown's Senior Director of U.S. Operations. U.S. outreach exploded with opportunities and growth this year. The digital world became more of a necessity in 2020 and our team adjusted beautifully in that direction. We held virtual events, we partnered on a new savings app called Eli, we launched our first podcast, and we had many other initiatives. At last year's gathering, there was huge interest in updating Crown's budget coaching program. So far this year, we've been able to revamp the budget coaching materials, add a new coach connection site, and upgrade the training program to an improved platform. We launched the updated program in September and have already had many coaches and clients sign up to get started. This last year, we continued to grow our radio presence by adding Way FM as a partner radio station. In addition, we collaborated with key stations to host virtual live events that were focused on seven steps to prepare your finances for COVID-19's economic impact. Chuck spoke at virtual events for radio listeners in Vancouver, Seattle, Asheville, and we have more stations that are lining up for that opportunity to serve their listeners. In April, we launched our very own Crown Stewardship podcast. It's been downloaded more than 10,000 times already. Just last month, we were asked by Christian Parenting and Denison Ministries to launch a new Family and Finances podcast. This new podcast will provide weekly episodes that teach God's biblical financial principles to a brand new audience of more than 400,000 people. One of the guests on the Crown Stewardship podcast has a fantastic Crown testimony that you're gonna to wanna to hear next. I am so delighted to have this opportunity to be able to share how Crown has changed my life. My name is James Douglas Stewart Jr. I live in the city of Irondale in the wonderful state of Alabama. I started on this journey about 20 years ago I had an opportunity to serve as the executive director for Crown for four years. And Crown has been impactful in my life as well as in the lives of others. Learning how to be able to handle money from God's perspective has been earth shattering to me. There are so many verses in the Bible that deals with money. I truly believe that God wanted us to be able to understand how to be able to deal with it his way so that we could be good stewards of the resources that we've been entrusted with. And Crown is a wonderful organization that provides us with the capabilities of being able to be good stewards of the resources that God has given to us. So I encourage everyone to go through the small group study to realize that God has a plan for your life and how he wants you to effectively use your resources for the edification and the building of his kingdom.
So make sure that you enroll in a Crown course today. Hi, I'm Megan Burkle, Crown's Director of Content. We have long wanted to expand our product offerings to include a video study for teens. And this year, thanks to the generosity of our donors, we have done that. The first of three segments in our new teen study entitled Your Life has been produced and covers financial stewardship. We are beyond excited to be reaching the next generation with life-changing content and we'll be producing the next two segments in the coming months. We've also released a companion guide for parents and guardians to learn with and coach their students. These are just two of the many additions to Crown's online learning platform that we have made in the last year. Do you follow us on social media? This year, Crown has increased our impact with Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Be sure to follow and like us across each platform for educational and inspirational content. We knew this year was going to be challenging. COVID has impacted everyone and everywhere. I should know, my husband and I both have recovered from the COVID virus. From the start of the pandemic, Crown took immediate steps to serve others by offering products free of charge to anyone who was in need. We offered our God Provides films and study guides in both English and Spanish to over 44,000 pastors and ministry leaders. Would you believe that our Spanish version of God Provides went viral on YouTube with over 1 million views? We are amazed and praise God for this global reach. We prepared quick start guides for those who were concerned about their finances during the time of crisis and also addressed unemployment for those affected by offering another free resource. So thank you, our loyal partners, for making it possible to serve so many people during these challenging times. I'd like for you to hear just one of the many testimonies we have received in these recent weeks. Dear Crown, I wanted to take a moment to express my sincere gratitude regarding your book called A Practical Guide to Overcoming Unemployment by Chuck Bentley. Back in April, I lost my job due to COVID-19. My emotions were all over the place. I went to your website and found multiple resources. I came across the unemployment book and ordered it. When it arrived, I literally read it from cover to cover. The advice and practical suggestions in this book are immeasurable. Every stage of what I was experiencing was addressed in this book. It began with simply how to change my mindset to be positive and trust God through the process. The book also helped me to set up a crisis budget because my finances were already in a mess, and now unemployment just made things even worse. The crisis budget helped me to put my focus just on what I needed for financial survival during this terrifying time. Also, the new job search information in the book was outstanding. It helped me every step of the way by showing how to update my resume, define my objectives, determine what direction I want to take in life, and how to explore all of my options. The advice also helped me as I went on new job interviews. And the end result is that after five long months, I am now officially employed again. I just wanted to say thank you for holding my hand throughout this entire process and providing outstanding guidance and support through this book. I'm Katie Logan, Crown Senior Director of Fundraising Operations. So far, we've given you a small glimpse of just some of the activities that have taken place at Crown this year. We were unsure of how COVID-19 would impact our partners' ability to continue to support Crown's mission. In March, we knew enough to prepare for the worst. Our board of directors approved a very conservative budget, and like much of the world, we braced ourselves for the unknown. We prayerfully considered and then declined to apply for the Government's CARES Act, not because we didn't need it, but because we wanted to put our faith in God to provide for the ministry instead. And He did. Your continued support has allowed us to not only maintain our initiatives, but embrace added opportunities as we continue to serve His kingdom. Just as God raised up Queen Esther in her day, we believe through your support, He has raised us up and positioned us for such a time as this. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the entire staff and most importantly, on behalf of every life we've been able to impact through your support. But the need still exists, potentially now more than ever, as people are hurting. We need you to continue to stand in the gap with us so we can help them. But enough about us. 
I am very excited to share with you this next testimony of life change, of God's ability to give hope and unending grace. I know you will be blessed by this. I remember exactly where I was. I was driving in my car and the radio was on. And I heard this man say, how would you like to make 25% on your money? And I was like, oh yes! You know, I was really excited about that. And it turns out it was Larry Burkett and he said, stop using your credit cards. And I thought, that is true because one of the credit cards I had, had was 29%, 29.9%. Um, interest rate and I had already maxed that card out so it taught me from that point going forward that I really needed to understand um, how to use credit cards wisely and definitely how to be a steward. It brought me to a journey of trying to find out how to manage my money. I went through numerous and I mean you name it I went through it whether it was our church or Dave Ramsey or um, uh, you, you name it, I've done it, and I never finished any of them. And then Crown had an online program. That program allowed me to participate with people from around the world. That information that Crown had through that program taught about stewardship, and that's something I had never heard about, stewardship, that you're managing God's resources. The Money Life program happened in 2016. That was about March. And then there was a offer for the gathering. I'd never heard of the gathering, never been to the gathering. I, I knew about Crown. And so in October, I attended my first gathering. And it was just, it was just a really wonderful opportunity to meet the individuals who had been instructors on the Money Life program and meet them in person. So when I left there in October, I was pumped. In December, my doctor told me that I had been, um, that the lump that I felt was actually breast cancer. And this was the day before Christmas. For the entire year of 2017, I was on my back, flat on my bed, and the chemo had taken all of my hair it had made me very sick. I couldn't, you know, it was almost like going through COVID-19 because you can taste um, and just the way you felt. It's just awful. Then one day I get this phone call and I pick up the phone because that's my only communication. I pick up the phone and I, I answer and this person says, hello, Jackie, it's Chuck Bentley. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? Because, you know, this man who's, who's in charge of a huge, you know, uh, ministry is calling little old me. And that just, it just cemented my love for Crown. In 2018, I said, I have all this money that I've been saving and it's enough to pay off my house. I went to the bank and I paid off my money and I walked out going, oh my gosh, I'm debt free. And then my boss called and said, guess what? You have 30 days and you will be laid off. And I said, you know what? I'm not gonna worry about it. You know, I've learned that God is my source. You know, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. So I'm not gonna worry. I literally said that, I'm not gonna worry about it. 24 hours later, a job that I had applied for in December of 2018 called me in May to say, hey, do you want this job? And I said, no negotiation, I'm, I'll take it. And so 24 hours after I had been notified that I would be laid off, I got a job offer that would start the day after my layoff. So God is good. I mean, and it's not just because I got this job offer, it's because he's good all the time. And I rested in him the day before, not panicked or anything. And he proved, you know, just what a wonderful source he is. After I paid off my home, I still had medical bills that were constant because you have to take maintenance drugs and you have to see the oncologist. So I am happy to report that as of July of 2020, I paid my last medical bill. So I'm truly debt free and I praise the Lord for that. 
If I had learned about this at a younger age, a lot of the mistakes that I made um, as a young adult, I could have avoided. So I would encourage you, if you are familiar with Crown, to share that information with those who don't know because there's a wealth of information that will literally change someone's life if they go through the content. Well, thank you so much, Jackie, for agreeing to allow us to share your testimony. I want you to know that you mean as much to Crown as Crown is meant to you. And I'm so inspired by your willingness to set such a great example by following God's financial principles. You know, 2020 has been a year of the unexpected. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? Most of us have never experienced a pandemic like COVID-19. A member of Crown's board and his family have had it. In fact, his brother died from it. Two pastors involved with Crown in Brazil have died from it. And you heard Megan, a member of our staff, she's had it and fortunately recovered. Most of us have never been through an economic crisis like this one. And I believe if we don't open soon, the global economy will be in danger of a depression. Most of us will look back and say that we've never been through a presidential election like the one I think we're about to go through. It promises to be volatile, regardless of the outcome. And the unsettling thing about this whole situation that we're in is it's not over. And my sense is that we possibly have another year of uncertainty. And at any point, it could get worse before it gets better. You know, I like to track trends and risk and stay informed of all the threats that we're facing. And there are many. I'm working on a book about that right now that I hope will be released soon. But I want to give you a few points that will help you be prepared for whatever unexpected events lay ahead in our future. Here's number one. Live as if you own nothing. Because in reality, you don't own anything. You know, it's built into God's eternal plan that we will lose all that we think that we have. He says we're born with nothing and we leave here with nothing. You and I have a brief opportunity to take responsibility and care for what God provides for us. But it's brief. And let me tell you why this is so important to remember. You know, what you love by how you respond when you lose it. We naturally grieve when we lose a loved one. But the Bible says in Hebrews 10, verse 32 through 36, remember those earlier days after you received the light when you endured a great conflict full of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. Did you catch that? Those believers did not grieve when they lost their stuff. They were actually joyful. Listen why. They knew it was never their stuff to begin with. And they knew that they had better and lasting possessions to come. The things that money cannot buy. The true riches promised by God. So remember, don't throw away that confidence. It will be richly rewarded. Your confidence that you own nothing here, but it's in the life to come. You know, I have a friend who lost everything. Possibly that friend is listening to this very uh, teaching tonight. He lost his home, his business, his career, his savings, his retirement, his pensions, everything. And he now says it was the best thing that ever happened to him. He found out what is truly priceless, the things that money cannot buy. And his attitude prepared me to never fear losing stuff. Here's number two on how to thrive in uncertain times. Love is if people are more important than money because they are. The summary of the essence and the significance of your life will be boiled down to two things, your love of God and your love for people, which God said is the greatest commandment. Now, here's why that's so important to remember. No matter what happens to the economy, no matter what happens to the health, no matter what happens in the election 
or in, the, or in the nation where you live right now. You can lose everything but still be rich in the eyes of God. In fact, nothing can prevent you or stop you from living this way unless you allow money or some other idol to get into your heart and you become focused on that other than the people in your life. Now, look, it's important to manage your money well. We've helped millions of people do that. Every day in every nation, practically, we help people manage their money well. But it must never be treated in place of God as your provider, your security, your source of comfort, your identity, or your greatest worry and fear in life. If you love money and not God and people, it doesn't matter how much money you accumulate on earth. You're going to live in fear and loneliness and emptiness. Yes, 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 listen to me. Manage your money well and be generous. Demonstrate that it doesn't have control over your life. Generosity is the best way to renounce the spirit of mammon's power over you. <laughs> Just give it away. I once attended the funeral of a man who had Frank Sinatra's famous song sung as his theme. The song is called, I Did It My Way. And it's a horrible song with terrible lyrics. It's about selfishness. But it was so appropriate for this person's life because there were only 12 people there. I was one of 12 people attending his funeral. And his life was entirely self-focused, not on other people. Here's number three. Live as if you will die soon, because you will. In the Bible, we're compared to grass that withers. <laughs> I understand withering. I'm withering away now. Just this week, we received this very touching testimony from a crown donor. One of our staff members called him to thank him for giving the crown. His name is Joe Bunker. Joe and his wife, Carolyn, have attended a gathering in the past, and they've been teaching crown classes to teenagers for many years. We asked him how we could pray for him, and it was then that he told us that his 28-year-old son, Matthew, died just two months ago in a climbing accident. He was weeping as he told us that he brought with him to his son's funeral the very crown quit claim deed that he and his wife signed in 1993 when they acknowledged that nothing belonged to them, not even their son Matthew. He said that change of mindset through Crown's teaching helped him through his piercing grief. That was an unexpected event in his life. We die much sooner than we ever think we will. I was on Facebook last week. I noticed a funeral announcement for one of my pastor friends in Brazil. I think we're the same age. I've preached at his church. He's a faithful crown leader, very special pastor. I didn't even know he was sick. And so when I asked about him, I found out he had died suddenly of COVID. It was totally unexpected. You know, Christ removed our fear of death, not just for that day when we cross from death to life and we're presented to him, but he freed us from that fear to live now, to put our full selves into our purpose and mission, to truly follow him with all of our heart and mind and soul, and to do it with boldness and courage. We are, in fact, victors over death, not victims of death. And here's number four on how to thrive in uncertainty. Recast the way you see your pain when the unexpected happens. Let me say it again. Recast the way that you see your pain when the unexpected happens. They say pain is the gift nobody wants. Now many of you are experiencing that gift right now. Your finances may be in pain. Your business, your marriage, your industry, your church, the pain is real and for some of you it's intense. But to move from victim to victor, you have to change the way. You have to change the context for how you translate that negative unwanted experience. A friend of mine used to tell the story of good pain and bad pain. Bad pain is hitting yourself on the thumb with the hammer. <laughs> you grab it and say bad things to yourself. It makes no sense. It, it, there's no good purpose for it. Now, good pain is maybe when you break through a, a glass window. You rush up the burning stairs into an apartment. You inhale dark smoke and you risk your life to rescue a child that's been trapped in that building. And when you emerge from that fire with the baby in your arms, you're cut, you're bruised, you're hurting, 
Maybe you're bleeding. You're, you're, you've been at great risk. And someone says, oh, you're a hero. Are you in pain? And you would say, no, it's nothing. I'm glad to be able to help because it's got a greater purpose. It's got context. Now, Joseph did this very thing. He experienced human trafficking. He was trafficked. He was rejected by his own family. He was sold into slavery. He was unjustly accused and falsely imprisoned. He was an innocent boy. The Bible says he was around 17, 18 years old when all of this happened to him. And he was stuck as a foreigner in a penitentiary, forgotten even by the cupbearer, who you would have thought would have helped him get out of prison. Now, who would have thought in that unexpected journey in his life that it was exactly God's rescue plan for the entire nation of Israel? And in the moment of reckoning when his father Jacob was gone, when Joseph could have had the idea to pay back his brothers and to get retribution. In that very moment, he looks them in the eye and he says to his brothers, you meant this for evil, but God meant it for good. He actually recast his own personal pain in, in a way that acknowledged that they had sinned. They had done wrong. He was a victim in that sense. Yet he also acknowledged in the same breath that he was a victor because God's greater purpose was to turn that unexpected event into his plan to save the entire Jewish nation. God redeemed his pain. The final point is don't allow fear to ever control you when unexpected things happen. Learn to walk by faith even when, it's, uh, when there is great fear. I want to tell you a personal story. When I was 12 years old, I experienced some traumatic events in my life. And they caused me to have recurring nightmares. The same one, night after night. They caused me great fear and anxiety to the point I didn't want to turn off the lights at night. I didn't want to close my eyes. I didn't want to go to bed. I didn't want to sleep because I knew the nightmare was coming. And the nightmare was this. I was a stick figure. And as a stick figure, I would get close to the edge of a cliff and I would fall over. And I would scream on my way down as I tumbled through the air towards this bottomless dark pit. I usually I would hit the ground and somehow survive. But just as I was trying to crawl back out of this dark pit, these large square boulders like cubes would start rolling off the edge of the cliff. And they would hit me one by one. One would hit one arm and pin this arm down and then another arm and pin that arm down. And then one of those cubes would hit my legs and trap my legs. And ultimately they would fall on my head. And then they would continue to fall and just pile on this huge amount of weight, one on top of the other. And I would either wake up screaming or crying or roll out of bed and, and just be in terror. It was my dad who eventually helped me to realize something about my dream that I had not seen. He realized that no matter how far I fell into that pit, or no matter how many times I fell into that pit, no matter how many rocks fell on top of me, because I was a stick figure, I was never crushed. I didn't even have any broken bones. I never died in this dream. In fact, I really wasn't hurt at all. My dad helped me to realize I was being controlled by fear and to have faith before I would close my eyes at night that God would protect me. It helped me to face this fear and to draw upon true faith in Christ to finally overcome the panic attacks that I was having. So I want you to remember my list. Live as if you own nothing, because that's reality. Love as if people are more important than money, because they really are. And live as if you're going to die soon, because you will, no matter how long you live on this earth. Recast the way you see your pain, because God will work it together for your good. You know why? Because you love Him and you're called according to His purposes. And remember, there's nothing to fear because of Christ. We're like that incredible little stick figure in my dream 
no matter how big the pit you fall into, no matter how dark your circumstances, no matter how heavy the burden that's piled on top of you, God will make it okay. You will live with him for eternity no matter what happens here. So rest and learn to thrive. Now, I want to take a few moments to give you an update on all that's been accomplished since our last gathering. It's been a crazy year for us, and in fact, it's been a remarkable year. One of the first things that happened is our board of directors voted that we would not apply for a government bailout loan or a grant. Now, in the United States, not-for-profits and churches were offered money to make up for some of the losses we might experience during the COVID pandemic. And we chose as a board and as an organization, as a staff, to say we are, not, we are tax exempt and so we're not going to put our confidence in the government to provide for us. Uh, that's taxpayer money that's not intended for us. And that we would trust the Lord. And let me just tell you, it's been a wonderful decision. Our partners and donors have been incredibly faithful throughout the whole thing. And God has provided for us. And we're very glad to be in the position we're in today, experiencing the faithfulness of God and your kindness towards our mission. We wrote an article about that and thousands of churches and ministries were reached uh, through our press release and media appearances. And so many other organizations made a decision to do the same thing. I wanna talk a little bit about what God has done through this uh, pandemic. Uh, we have been able to actually accomplish more than I think we ever have in our 44 year history. We've created new and different methods to reach people. We're doing online events. We're doing more social media. We started a podcast. I started doing many more new media appearances and we've formed new partnerships with people around the world who are now using our content. We're expanding our outreach to serve the hurting. You know, one story you may have missed, and let me just remind you, people's lives are at stake when they're hurting financially. Financial pressure is some of the worst pe pressure that a family will experience. And even through a social media post, we received a testimony that it saved someone from suicide. But a significant shift is developing right now, and one that I believe God is leading us towards. Our outreach to the poor and the hurting is growing larger and spreading farther than any other outreach that we have right now. And I believe that's because these are people on God's heart. These are people that God wants us to take notice of and to care about. Now, we're still serving the middle class, we're still serving the affluent, we're still getting our message out in all the traditional ways we've done for so many years. But there are people now who are being, that are able to escape generational grinding poverty and horrible circumstances because they're learning how to be a good steward. We're seeing this shift so that the gospel is presented to them the way James said that we should help others. Not just a compassionate wish that they be warm and well fed and that we'll pray for them, but to see that with local resources, they can become self-sufficient with no, no sponsorship, no outside help. They can depend on God and take care of their own needs. And let me just tell you, the stories that we get from some very hard places like Venezuela, or Haiti, or Cuba, or some African nations that are truly suffering right now. The stories we get are beautiful. The redemption that's happening in those lives and those families, the, the, the dignity that's being restored to those families after suffering for so long is a beautiful picture of God's work through Crown. You know, we're continuing to advance our very core message of redemptive stewardship. We are spreading through partnerships with churches, with ministries and key leaders across the world. And we're so excited about what 2021 holds. We truly believe that as we follow God's lead and as you come around and help us, we are going to touch more people for such a time as this than ever before. And let me say this, 
If things continue to get worse in the economy or with the pandemic or with the political scenarios and the division and strife and racial tensions that we've seen, I believe we'll grow even more because our, our services and our support will be needed more than ever before in all of our history. Now, here's what we need. We need continued support for our general budget. People who are willing to say, we trust you with the resources, use them how God leads you to use them. And to, and to take advantage of the opportunity to support everything that we're doing here, whether it's through the United States radio and media outreach, the production of content, our international partnerships, or through some very specific ways that we're helping the poor. We need increased monthly supporters, people that will make it a priority to give every single month so that we don't have the highs and lows in our budget. We need you to share our message on social media and to help others get engaged with sharing a podcast or, or leading a study or volunteering to be one of our coaches. We need you to pray for our outreach in the United States and for our global leaders and volunteers who are working so very hard around the clock, paying their own way in many, in many cases to support the mission in those countries. Now, here are some ways you can give. If you're online right now, you can go to crown.org slash give 2020. No matter where you are in the world, you can make a gift online. And I would hope that you would be able to do that tonight, that you would not put it off. This is the most important time of the year for us to establish a strong budget to go forward into the next season. And so we need you to remember us in your giving. That's crown.org slash give 2020. Or if you're in the United States, you can text to give. Text to this number, 855-506-1976. That's actually the year that our ministry was started, by the way. That's 855-506-1976. If you text that number, you'll get instructions on how to give through texting right now. I hope you'll join us. This is an important time for us. We've got exciting plans ahead, and we want you to go with us. Now I'm going to ask Andre to come and close out our gathering this year with a time of prayer. And then I'm going to come back and take your questions. Thank you so much for joining us, and God bless you. Weren't you just so excited and encouraged today hearing about what Crown is doing around the world? None of what you have heard today would have been possible if it wasn't for each one of you partnering with us in ministering to those that are on the, on the heart of God. I was so encouraged by the reports we heard today and the wonderful teaching from Chuck. In times like these, you know, my heart and my emotions uh, are stirred to action uh, to do even more for His kingdom. Thank you for partnering with us and for journeying together to reach the world. Before we transition into Q&A, please join me as we thank the Lord for His goodness, His mercy, His grace, and above all, His love. And after I prayed for us, uh, I would love to speak the blessing recorded in Numbers chapter 6, verse two, verses 22 through 27, over each one of you. And um, I would like to do this in both Hebrew and English. So why don't you join me as we pray together? Father, we thank you for a wonderful time that we could have spent listening to everything that, uh, that you have accomplished in and through us. And it's not just us because we are more than just the sum of us. We are the, every person listening that have said, I'm partnering with you. It's us as a collective that have done what you have called us to do. And so we're so thankful, we're grateful. We thank you, Jesus, for your blood. It's because of your blood that we can be righteous before the Father, not because of our own doing. So whatever we do, we do from that place. And we're so thankful, Holy Spirit, that you lead and guide us into the truth of the word. And so, Lord, we want to say today, speak, Lord, for your servants listen. We want to obey and we want to follow. And thank you, Lord, 
for the direction you give us. And thank you for every person that says, I am walking with you. And for the things we can do and accomplish for your kingdom. And so, Lord, in closing, I want to speak a blessing over each one that's currently listening or that will listen to the recording. And Lord, may these words go deep into each one's hearts as you commanded Moses and Aaron to speak this over the children of Israel. And so, Lord, I want to speak this now over each one of us. Yeverechecha Adonai ve'yish merecha. Ya'er Adonai panafelecha ve'chuneka. Yisa Adonai Panaf Elecha, Vyasem Lecha, Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift His countenance upon you. He turns His face towards you and He gives you His peace, His Shalom, His wholeness. And may that peace Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus from this time forth until you see Him face to face. Amen.